Hello, hello and welcome to another update video about ETH. Yeah, I don't think there is much to add to yesterday's video, so we keep it short. Bear in mind, today we've got our member live stream at 5 p.m. UTC. If you're interested in checking that out, you can follow the links in the description to the channel membership. Uh, today we talk a little bit about the DXY and how we could use it to get to some, yeah, wave coins for Bitcoin generally um, and how they are correlated and when correlations make sense and when they don't, because often they don't. But um, we can still get some insights from the DXY. That's the educational topic today in the member live stream. But about ETH, we are still in the same situation. Yeah, just below the key decision point of $1,700. Uh, we've got the yellow wave count, very, very simple. Uh, we've got an a, uh, sorry, a wave one down, a wave two up, very clearly three waves up. We can count the move down in five, but it's not very clear five waves. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin looks a little bit more like a five wave move down, but um, overall you can count it as five down, three up. You would have difficulties to count that as a five up. Yeah, that doesn't really work. So the, the thing is, I'm still sort of in favor of the yellow wave count. But as I said to you before, it could easily be that this B wave just resets higher. That wouldn't make any difference um, in the short term. It would just send it higher, obviously, to round about maybe $1,900 but it could still break down afterwards in a C wave later. So that this C wave that we assume might have started already, which however has become less likely in the last few days because ETH is really, is really pushing against the ceiling, right? So that would just be later. That would just be a bit delayed and start a little later. So I think first of all, we just need to see, okay, can we break above the $1,700 level? If that's the case, I will reset the B wave a little higher. And that means that we are probably just working here on a flat structure where the A wave was a three wave move. So the A wave of yellow wave B, the B wave was overshooting to the downside. And then the C wave could be a five wave move into the $1,900 region. And then we have three waves up. And then the price could still come down in five waves in the yellow wave count later, which just be a bit of a delay. That is possible and also not unlikely because as you can see here, there's a trend line coming down. We haven't even touched it. And looking at Fibonacci retracements, the B wave that we had, so if we assume the B wave was here, it would just be very short. Now, B waves can be short, which makes it tricky, right? But if we talk about a retracement area for this B wave, this is normally the common one between 1803 and 1932, the standard retracement area for this B wave. And if we talk about Fibonacci extensions, what could be reached? And let's see if we have an overlap between the retracement area and the extension area. And here 1804 is one, but it could still push higher. Yeah? 1804 is certainly a level I would watch. Um, we're now, now consolidating just below the one to one ratio, but we don't have enough waves to call it an ABC. So it needs five waves up. So yeah, that's sort of the, the white wave count. Of course, the white wave count could turn into something more bullish. So at the moment, the white wave count is just short-term bullish, but it would include more medium-term, long-term bullish potential because let's say this is not a reset of the B wave and we already have it all completed down here and that would be a five wave move up, which could turn into a wave one in the more bullish wave count. And then the ABC pullback could be a wave two. So what we will do after we can identify five waves up, we can work with it I will identify a pullback area for a wave two. And then if we come down into this region and we see a small impulsive reaction to a support area, this is the signal probably for a third wave rally higher into the $3,000 region. This would be bullish. Um, so that's basically what I'm waiting for <clears throat> and watching for. Until that turns up, I'm very much aware this could just, uh, sorry, yeah, until the structure really appears, I'm very much aware this could just simply be a high B wave. Um, or we could just be in the yellow wave count with a more direct pathway to the downside. I it, it looks like it wants to push higher, but we all know how quickly things can change in crypto. We're in a very, very tricky situation where some altcoins are pushing, like um, like, like Solana, uh, like uh, Aave, GMX, Rune, okay? They're, they are pushing, there are a few others. Um, most altcoins haven't woken up yet, but you know they, they could easily do that. Um, a lot of them are in support areas. So it will be interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting. But without a signal on these charts, we can't say it, it, it's doing that. It would just be a guess. But um, as I explained to you in the last few weeks, most altcoins are and were already in a situation where basically a rally is overdue. 
um, but without a signal, we have to expect it to go down lower, right? So we, you need some kind, some kind of a signal, something. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Um, so, you know, if ETH continues to push, I think we'll probably see a bit of an altcoin rally. Bitcoin dominance goes that way as well. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but overall, I think BTC and ETH are still going to lead. So, yeah, I think the, the, you know, I think the levels are very clear. Obviously, if ETH breaks below, and that's a key level here, if ETH breaks below 1635, it's probably now, yeah, it's a little bit different now, it's 1637, then this would be a very first indication, honestly, a very first and early indication that this move to the upside might be over. Um, but maybe I'll give it a little bit more space. Let's keep it at 1630 maybe um, due to the volatility. And then we measure the entire distance here. So as long as ETH stays above 1630, it could still push higher here. This is just the first indication that this is breaking, but only early indication. So don't mistake this for confirmation or anything. Um, but yeah, a really, really nasty, nasty range here. I mean, this could, similar to Bitcoin, yeah, this could just turn into some kind of a triangle here. It's not as, as well defined as on the Bitcoin chart, but it could turn into some kind of a triangle uh, in which, for example, this was the A wave of, of a triangle. This is the B wave of the triangle. This is the C wave of the triangle, which the triangle will get invalidated above the end of August high. Then this here is the D wave and an E wave of the triangle. And then we come down possible as well, but not so important to the analysis because it doesn't lead to a break of any level. It would just be more sideways action. Yeah, that's my update about ETH. Um, just make sure you have a plan at the moment in, in the current condition. Yeah, it's uh, very important because if this thing just goes higher and you don't have a plan, you will feel FOMO. And FOMO is one of the most dangerous, what well, it is the most dangerous emotion in trading. Yeah, that's my update about um, ETH. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links in the description. And if you're interested, check out the membership. Uh, today is the member live stream and you get access to Discord and Telegram, the live chat groups, educational content. And as a gold member, you get access to a lot of short-term market updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.